Christian Slater, Jerry Van Dyke, Robert Guillaume, Carol Kane, Bronson Pinchot, Dan Loria, Craig Shepard, Armenia McQueen, Ryan Slater, Tina Majorino, Miles Jeffrey, and Mae Whitman. And now, our narrator for this evening, Sally Field. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the historic Pasadena Playhouse. Thank you very much for coming and supporting the Elizabeth Glazier Pediatric AIDS Foundation. Tonight's performance is the 1947 Lux Radio Theater production of Frank Caffer's It's a Wonderful Life. And to present that production, we have to go back into another era. We're going to do that with the help of our orchestra. And our conductor, Richard Kaufman. <laughs> and sound effects from one of the great original radio artists, Ray Erlenborn. <laughs> so please, come with me now to the golden era of radio. bring you the story of a typical American. Might be you, might be me. It's the story of George Bailey, citizen of Bedford Falls, New York. More than anything else, George wanted to see the world, the wonderful, exciting world that lay somewhere beyond the limits of his own hometown. Oddly enough, this story doesn't begin in Bedford Falls. In fact, it doesn't begin anywhere in this world. It begins in heaven, where Joseph, the superintendent of angels, has summoned an apprentice angel named Clarence. Am I really going down to earth, sir? Oh, how splendid. <laughs> yes, Clarence, there is a very discouraged man down there. His name is George Bailey. And at exactly 10.45 p.m. earth time, he'll be thinking seriously of throwing away his greatest gift. Oh, no. His life? Yes, Clarence, his life. Your job is to stop him if you can. Now, please sit down so I can tell you all you need to know about George Bailey. Sir, if I should accomplish my mission, may I perhaps get my wings? I've been waiting over 200 years now, and... <laughs> well, people are beginning to talk. <laughs> Clarence, what's that book you have there? Oh, uh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, sir. I was reading it when you sent for me. Oh, fine book. Excellent. Well, you do a good job on George Bailey, and we'll see about your wings. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, listen. When George Bailey was a boy, two events occurred that you should keep in mind. One was when his younger brother, Harry, fell through the ice and almost drowned. George saved him. Brother fell through ice. George saved him. Got it? <laughs> Ever since, George has had a bad ear, all that icy water, you understand. A bad ear, yes, sir. The other event came a few months later. George was working after school in Mr. Gower's drugstore. One day, Mr. Gower received a telegram informing him that his only son had died of influenza. It was a terrible blow, and poor Gower tried to lose his grief in whiskey. Where have you been, George? Mr. Mrs. Blaine's called twice. What happened to her prescription? You lost it, didn't you? No, no, Mr. Gower. I have it here, sir. Eh, why, well, you good for nothing. Don't you know the Blaine girl is very sick? Oh, Mr. Gower, my, my ear. You're, you're hurting my sore ear. I'll teach you to loaf, you lazy brat. M Mr. Gower, you, you don't know what you're doing. You, you put something bad in those capsules. Shut up. I, I, I know you feel bad. I saw the telegram about your son, but, but look, look at the bottle, Mr. Gower. It, it's poison. Poison? Please, please don't hurt my sore ear again, Mr. Gower. Poison? Oh, George. George! I will never tell. I promise. Well, Clarence, that was George Bailey as a boy. 
When he grew up, he wanted to go to college, but there just wasn't the money. So he worked four years in the Building and Loan Association. Building and Loan Association? Oh, I forgot to tell you. George's father was in the building and loan business. He and George's uncle, Billy. They had high ideals, but low bank accounts. Anyhow, George worked for his father and saved enough to see him through the university. That summer, he planned to go to Europe. He got a job on a cattle boat to do a little traveling before college. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It's hard to believe this is my last meal in the old Bailey boarding house. Yes, we're sure going to miss you, George. Yeah, well, I'm going to miss you, too, Pop. Hey, what's the matter? You know, you're looking a little tired. Ah, uh, I had another tussle with Henry Potter today. I thought when you put him on the board of directors, he'd ease up on you. So did I. I just can't understand a man like Mr. Potter. I mean, he can't begin to spend all his money. I guess Potter owns just about everything in Bedford Falls except our building alone. That's why he hates us. Hey, George, can I borrow your tuxedo socks? Yeah, help yourself here. Oh, well, where are they? In your suitcase? No, I'm not gonna need any tuxedo on the cattle boat, you know. Where'd you get that suitcase, anyway? Well, Mr. Gower gave it to me. He's going away, President. It's one of these days you're gonna see this suitcase covered with travel stickers. It's gonna have Italy on it, and Baghdad, and Samarkand. Looks like you're gonna have a pretty full summer, George. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have a pretty full life, I think. Hey, why don't you come to the dance tonight? What, and be bored to death? Well, you couldn't want a better death. Lots of pretty girls there. Hey, I gotta hurry. I wish we could send Harry to college with you, George. Now, we got that all figured out, Pop. He's going to take over my job at the building alone, work for four years just like I did, and then he's going to go to school. But well, he's pretty young for that job. No, he's no younger than I was. Maybe you were born older, George. Huh? George, when you get out of college, I don't suppose you would consider coming back to the building alone. Oh, Pop, no, I, I just couldn't do that. I couldn't face being cooped up for the rest of my life in that shabby little office in that... Oh, I... Uh, I'm sorry, Pop. I, uh, I didn't mean that. I mean, it, it's just this business uh, of nickels and dimes and, uh, you know, I'd go crazy. I mean, I want to do something big. You know, I want to I wanna do something important. Well, in a small way, we are doing something important, George. In that shabby little office, we help people figure out how they can own their own homes. I know, Pop, and I just wish, you know, I, I, I feel that, I, you know, I just feel like... Look, if I don't get away, I'm gonna bust. Yes, all right, boy. You get yourself an education and get out of here. Hey, Pop, you want a shock? Uh, I think you're a pretty great guy. <laughs> oh, thanks, Georgia. I'm glad to hear it. Look, why don't you go on to Harry's stance? You'll have a good time. No, 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 no. Well, you know, maybe I will drop in. And maybe I will at that. So, George Bailey went to the dance. Is that important, Joseph? Well, it was at the dance that he met Mary Hatch. Oh. And three hours later, he was walking her home. George and Mary were feeling pretty good, Clarence. As a matter of fact, they were feeling wonderful. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Right on, Come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. <laughs> That was really great. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Oh, boy. You know, it's like a beautiful organ or something. Ah, uh, gee whiz. You know, if it wasn't me talking, I'd say you were the prettiest girl in town. Well, why don't you say it? Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe I will. Uh, say, how old are you anyway? Eighteen. Eighteen. Huh. Too young or too old? No. No, that's just, just about right, you know. It sort of suits you. <laughs> hey, look where we are. Oh, the old Grenville house. Yeah, I gotta throw a rock. Oh, oh, no, no, George. Oh, I love that old house. Well, don't you know about deserted houses? They, uh, you make a wish, then you throw a rock. Oh, but George, oh, it's such a lovely old place. What? I want to live there someday. You want to live in there? That, 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 no, I wouldn't live in that. I wouldn't live in that as a ghost. I wouldn't live in that. Now, just watch. Watch this here. Here we go. Whoa. Good shot. How about that, huh? Yeah. Well, 
smells like a howitzer. <laughs> I guess I broke that window, didn't you sure I? Did. <laughs> well, what'd you wish for, George? Uh, well, I don't know. You know, I, in fact, I didn't wish for just one wish. I wished for a whole hat full. Now, Mary, I'm, I'm going to shake the dust of this crummy little town off my feet. I'm going to see the world. I'm going to see Italy and Greece, Parthenon, Colosseum, and then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go to college and work real hard, and then I'm going to build things. I'm going to build airfields. I'm going to build, I'm going to build skyscrapers and a hundred stories high, and, and yep, and bridges. This a mile long, and, and then I'm going. to... Well, hey, now, <laughs> Mary, what is it you want? I mean, I mean, do you want, you want the moon? Do you want the moon, Mary? Because all you got to do is just say. Okay, your... the moon. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Then what? Well, then what? Um, well, you could swallow it, see? And then it dissolve uh, like an aspirin, you know? And then it, uh, the moonbeams would shoot out of the tips of your fingers and, 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 and out of the ends of your hair, and then... <laughs> I don't know. Am I talking too much? Yes. Why don't you just kiss her instead of talking her to death? Who's that up there? Ah, youth is wasted on the wrong people. <laughs> Why, just wait a minute, mister. Come on, you come back here. I'll show you some kissing. George, George, Uncle Billy, look here. I'm gonna kiss Mary Hatch. You wanna watch? George, you need the car quick. Your father's had a stroke. What? What? George, get in. Hurry. Mary, I'm sorry. I, I, I've gotta go. Well, George's father died that night, Clarence. So, of course, George didn't go to Europe. And that fall, just as he was getting ready to leave for college, the building loan held a meeting. They were going to appoint a successor to George's father. What's that? What's that you said, Mr. Potter? I said that as long as Peter Bailey is dead, let's dissolve a building loan. The town doesn't need it. Hey, now, wait a minute. No, you uh, wait a minute. Peter Bailey was not a businessman. Ideals without common sense can ruin a town. What do we get? A discontented, lazy rabble oh. instead of a thrifty working class. Oh, you gotta hold on, Mr. Potter. Now, just hold on there, just a minute. You know you? I meant no disrespect, yours, but... No, no, just, just, just wait a minute. I mean, why my father ever started this cheap penny ante building alone, I don't ever know. I don't think I'll ever know it. But just remember this, that rabble, that rabble you're talking about does most of the working and the paying and the living and the dying in this community. Well, it's, you know, is that too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so, and people were human beings to him. But to you, you warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. And, well, in my book, Mr. Potter, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book, George. I'm talking about the building alone. You're talking about something that you can't get your fingers on. Well, this town needs a measly one-horse institution, if only to have some place where people can borrow a few dollars without crawling to you. Now, come on, Uncle Billy, let's get out of here. Well, what happened, George? Boy, oh boy, Tilly, you should have heard George. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know, they're voting us out of business. Well, That's who cares? I can get another job. Well, you got to hear George, you missed your boat to Europe. You want to miss college, too? George, George, we just voted Potter down. You're still in business. <laughs> okay, we're still in business. No, we're right. still in okay, business. Okay, okay, there's one condition, George. They well, have appointed you to take your father's place. No, see, I'm going to college. See, and, I, and I, look, this is my last chance. Now, Uncle Billy, he's your man. Here. George, you've got to take it. They'll vote with Potter otherwise. <laughs> I know. George did not get to college. That's right, Clarence. He gave his college money to Harry instead. But uh, what happened to that good-looking girl? You know, Mary. Oh, George saw her now and then. Not very often, though, because she went away to college, too. So George had to wait four more years for Harry to come back and take over the building and loan. He still had his dream of seeing the world. Except when Harry came home, he wasn't alone. There was a girl with him. His wife. George? I'm out here on the porch, Mother, trying to get some air. Well, how do you like your new sister-in-law? Oh, she's swell. Looks like she can keep Harry on his toes. Yeah. 
Yeah, keep him out of Bedford Falls. What do you mean? Ruth's father offered Harry a wonderful job up in Buffalo. Buffalo, well, well, that means that, that you... Yep. Oh, George. Now, d d do you know that that Mary Hatch is, is back from school? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Nice girl. Nice girl, Mary. Uh-huh. Oh, stop grunting, George. Give me one good reason why you shouldn't give Mary a call. Sam Wainwright. Sam's crazy about Mary. Well, she's not crazy about him. Now, how do you know that? I mean, did she discuss it with you? Besides, Sam's away in New York. Oh, oh, oh. I see. All's fair in love more, huh? Uh, no, uh, I didn't well, say Well, okay, that. mother, okay. <laughs> I think that I'll just have to go out and, and I'll find that girl and I'll just do a little passionate necking. Oh, George, George, <laughs> just stop that. Well, good night, Mrs. Bailey. And by the way, you want any books out of the library? Library? George, you go see Mary. Now, do you hear me? You go. Goodness sakes alive. George? Is that you out there? Well, hello, Mary. Are you coming in? See, I just happen to be passing by here. Oh, I thought you were picketing. Have you made up your mind? About what? About coming in. Your mother just phoned. <laughs> she said you were coming over. No, my mother just phoned? I... Now, why is she calling here? You know, I just happen to be passing by. That's all. Well? Well, I'll come in for a minute. A fella can't go out for a walk nowadays without somebody just... <sighs> well, when'd you get back? Tuesday. Huh? Where'd you get that dress? Oh, you like it? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I still can't understand why my mother called you. I didn't tell her I was coming over here. You know that. Well, would you rather leave? No. No, I wouldn't want to be rude like that. I'll just sit down here for a little while. It's, it's, it's next about your brother Harry getting married, isn't it? Yeah, sure it is. Don't you like his wife? Well, of course I like her. She's peach. She's swell. So it's just marriage in general you're not enthusiastic about? No. No, see, now, now marriage, that's all right for a lot of people. That's, it's all right for, for Harry and for Sam and, and, and you. Mary, who's down there? It's George Bailey, Mother. What's he want? I don't know. What do you want? Me? Uh, I don't know. I... I don't want a thing. I don't want a thing. I just, I just came in to get warm. He's making violent, passionate love to me, Mother. <laughs> well, you just tell him to go right back home. Sam's calling you tonight from New York, isn't he? Yes, I guess so. Would you like to hear some, some music, George? Oh, well, sure, yeah, sure. You know, your mother needs a... a I don't... I didn't come here to look... Uh, well, why did you come here, then? Well, I don't... I don't really know. I mean, you're supposed to have all the answers. Now, you tell me. Oh, why don't you just go home? Well, I will. I don't know why I came here in the first place. So, all right. Good night, then. Good night. All right. Telephone, Mary! I mean, the way you're shouting at me, George, I mean, it seems like you... One would think that... Well, you'd think what? And you think... Mary! It's a doggone crazy song, anyway. Hello? Hey, y'all. Sam. Mary, gee, it's good to hear your voice. I was just, uh, just talking to an old friend of yours, George Bailey. <laughs> well, put him on. I'll talk to him, too. Oh, oh uh, wait a second. Uh, wait, George, um, Sam wants to talk to you. He doesn't want to talk to George. <laughs> he does so, Mother. He asked for him. Well, why'd you call me? Because if I, you know, I'm in a hurry here, and Sam I can't really... Sam you. Well, oh, well, uh... Hiya, Sam. Tell Mary to get on the extension upstairs. He says for you to get on the extension upstairs. I can't. Mother's on the extension. <laughs> I am not. We can both hear from here, George. Just 
Put your head a little closer. I have a big deal coming up that's gonna make us all rich. George, remember that time you told me about making plastic out of soybeans? Uh, soybeans, yeah. Well, Father's checked into it, and he's gonna put up a factory. How do you like that? A factory, huh? And here's the point, George. I may have a job for you, unless you're still married to that broken-down building and loan. Oh, and Mary. I'm here. Listen, you tell that guy I'm giving him the chance of a lifetime. Just give me that phone, will you? Here's George again, Sam. Now, you listen to me, Mary Hatch. I don't want any plastics, right? I don't want any job, and I... Look, I don't want to get married ever. I understand that. I, I know what you're going to do. You're going to try to trick me, aren't you? You're going to try to trick me, and then you're going to think... Now... George. Oh, Mary, darling, I love you. Well, well, so George Bailey and Mary Hatch got hedged, huh? Yes, Clarence. George and Mary got married, and they started off on their honeymoon in Ernie Bishop's taxi cab. Hey. Yeah. Where are you two going on your honeymoon, huh? Well, we got two thousand dollars, Ernie. Yeah. And we're gonna shoot the works. Yeah. We got a whole week in New York. No. Yeah. Oh. We got a whole week in Bermuda. What? Yeah, the highest hotel, the oldest champagne, <laughs> the hottest music. Wow. We got the prettiest wife. Yeah. Yeah, so you're finally getting out of Bedford Falls, huh? Then what? Huh? Oh, after that, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Farley, I just, I think that I ought to kiss you. It, hey, George, there's uh, something funny going on over there at the uh, the building in Loan. Eey. If I were a betting man, I'd say it looks like a run. Hey, pull over here a minute, will you, Ernie? Yep. George, let, let's not stop, please. No, just wait a minute here. I, I want to see what's going on. I'll be right back. George, please. George? George! Poor George Bailey. He's certainly in desperate trouble, Joseph. I'll go to him at once. Now you sit down, Clarence. Sit down. George and Mary had just started out on their honeymoon when they ran smack into the financial panic of 1932. In the waiting room of the building and loan, a hundred frantic people were clamoring for their savings. What happened to all those people out here? Oh, we're in a pickle, George, a real pickle. Uh, all I know is the bank called in our loan an hour ago, and I had to hand over all our cash. Holy mackerel. Well, our charter says we have to stay open until 6 o'clock. How can we stay open without any, any money? Well, I got to go out and I got to talk to those people. Come on. Hey, how about our money, George? Where's our money? Now, come on. Come on now, folks. Now, please, just... Just wait a minute. Now, see, your money's not here. It's in other people's houses. It's in the Kennedy's house. It's in the McLaren house. It's in your house. And it's in a hundred other houses. What are you going to do? Foreclose on all those? I've got $242 in Bailey Brothers shares. Now let me have it. All right, all right, Charlie. You'll get your money in 60 days. 60 days? Yeah, that's what you agreed on when you bought your share. Hey, I got my money. Old man Potter's taken over the bank, and he'll pay 50 cents on every dollar. Hey, Folks, hey, please, hey. please, I beg you, please, don't do this. Don't you see, if Potter gets a hold of your shares, he'll control the building and loans. He's got the bank. He's got the bus line. He's got the department stores, and now he's after us. And why is that? That's because he wants you living in his shacks and paying the kind of rent he decides to charge. And we can get through this thing, all right? But we got to stick together, all right? We gotta have faith in one another. My husband's out of work. We need money. I got doctor bills to pay. I can't feed my kids on faith. George, we, Mary. We still have our money. How much do you need? Mary, look. Oh, you're wonderful. Now, just hang on here for a minute, folks. Listen, I got two thousand dollars here. Charlie, how much do you need? Two hundred and forty-two dollars. <laughs> Charlie. Please, now, just enough to tide you over. I said $242. Okay, okay. Uncle Billy, give Charlie $242. Ed, now, how much do you need just to get by? Well, I was kind of hoping it... I guess uh, $20 would be just fine. All right, now you're talking. Mrs. Thompson, how about you? Well, $17.50 will do me. All right, now, who's next? <laughs> Hey, look at the clock. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two, one, six o'clock. We made it. Lock that door, Cousin Tilly, quick. We're still in business, Uncle Billy. Hey, we've even got two dollars left. Hello, Bailey Brothers. 
George, there's a call for you. That's okay. That's okay. And then call my wife, will you, Tilly? She's probably over at Mother's. <clears throat> Mrs. Bailey's on the line. No, I don't want to talk to Mrs. Bailey. I want to talk to Mrs. Bailey. Uh, Mrs. Bailey, oh, that's right. That's my wife. <sighs> Give me the phone here. Now, Mary, hello. Listen, I'm really sorry that I was... No. What, come home? Now, what home? 320 Sycamore? Well, whose house is that? What? Well, I... how can... It... All right, sure, sure. I'll be, I'll be right there. Clarence, guess what 320 Sycamore was? His mother-in-law's house? <laughs> no, number 320 Sycamore was the old Granville house, the one that George threw rocks at. The one where George and Mary made their wishes. Yes, sir, that's where they spent their honeymoon, and that's where they set up housekeeping. They were still living there two years later, when old man Potter asked George to stop over at his office. Sit down, George. Sit down. Have a cigar. Why, thank you, sir. Now, George, you're a young man, married, making, say, $40 a week at the building alone? Forty-five. Forty-five. Now, if you were some ordinary yokel, I'd say you were doing fine. But George Bailey is intelligent and ambitious. And he hates the building alone, almost as much as I do. He's been dying to get out of town since he was a kid. But he's trapped. Trapped into frittering his life away, playing nursemaid to a bunch of garlic eaters. Do I paint a correct picture, George, or do I exaggerate? What's your point, Mr. Potter? My point is that you were the only man in town who has stood up to me, George. I want to hire you to manage my affairs. I'll start you off at 20000 a year. Twenty thousand tw dollars? I mean, are you sure you're talking to me, George Bailey? Yes, I mean George Bailey, whose ship has just come in, provided he has a sense to climb aboard. But, uh, but what about the building and loan? Have found it, man. I'm offering you a three-year contract at twenty thousand dollars a year. Is it a deal or is it? The answer is no, doggone it. If you offered me a million dollars to stay around this town and play stooge to you, the answer would still be no. Now, just let me alone. <laughs> George, I've been waiting up for you. What did Mr. Potter want? Oh, nothing. He was just talk, 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 talk. This nothing, really. Ah, gee. Mary Hatch, why in the world did you ever marry a guy like me, anyway? To keep from being an old maid. Well, you know, I did want to see the world, you know, and I was going to build things, and then I was going to... I was going to give you the moon, wasn't I? And then what have I given you? I didn't give you anything, not even a new dress, not for a couple of months anyway. And I feel awful about that. So do I, especially in the morning. Well, you could have married Sam Wainwright or something like that, you know, anybody else in town. I didn't want to marry anybody else. And I want my baby to look exactly like you. Yeah, but I mean, you didn't even have a honeymoon, and I promised you that, and that... <laughs> you what? My baby. You're... Mary? Mary? Mary, you mean you're sitting on the nest? <laughs> well, Mary had a baby, Clarence. A boy. You don't say. Then she had another one, a girl. Well, what do you know? Night after night, George would come home late from the office. Things weren't so good at the building alone. Potter was really bearing down hard on him. Then came the war, and Mary had another baby by then. Oh, they were very busy. <laughs> but she still had time to help out at the USO. Uncle Billy sold war bonds, and George's brother Harry became a real hero. He shot down 15 planes. And George? What about George? George was 4F, his bad ear. But he was an air raid warden. And on VE Day, he wept and prayed. And on VJ Day, he wept and prayed again. We're, we're getting pretty close to today, aren't we, sir? Yes, Clarence. You now know almost everything you have to know about George Bailey. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. 
except what happened that finds him down there at this moment wanting to die. Well, sir, well? Today is the day before Christmas, Earth time. George is pretty excited. Hey, guys and Tilly's, just... Will you look at this newspaper? I mean, just... Commander Harry Bailey, decorated by the president. I mean, just my kid brother receiving the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's wonderful, George. <sighs> I mean, what do you think about that? He shot down 15 planes, and the last one he was, was just about to dive into a transport that was loaded with soldiers. I mean, man, you know what that means? That means that he saved lives, saved hundreds of them. Gee whiz. Hey, where's Uncle Billy? Oh, gone to the bank, George. He's depositing that $8,000. Oh, good, good. Who's that in the office? That man again, the bank examiner. Oh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Carter. Tilly gets uh, uh, the books for Mr. Carter, will you? And when Uncle Billy comes in, you let me know. Well, well, how do you like to do this to paper, Mr. Potter? Just can't keep those Bailey boys down, now, can you? Let me see that newspaper. <laughs> yeah, you can keep it. Sorry, I can't chat with you, you old thief. You gotta make a deposit. <laughs> A terrible thing happened, Clarence, a terrible thing. Uncle Billy couldn't find the money because the envelope with the $8,000 was folded up in that newspaper he gave to old man Potter. I just don't know what happened to it, George. I just don't know. But it's $8,000, Uncle Billy. I mean, the bank examiner is out there, and that money doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the depositors. I just know what, what are we going to do, George? I, I traced every step I took. Oh, I'm no good to you, George. Hey, all right, I can't. think and try to think and I think. I can't think anymore. I can't think. Well, like where's that. that money, you silly old fool? I mean, you know what this means. It means bankruptcy. It means scandal. It means prison. I, and one of us is going to go to jail. Now, it's not going to be me. Now, just get out of my way. I'm going home. George, dear, what's wrong? You haven't said a word since you came home. Well, it's that banging on the piano. Does Janie have to keep playing that same piece over and over and over and over again? You have to practice for the Christmas party, Daddy. Excuse me. Oh, what is it, dear? Another hectic day? Yeah, yeah, another red-letter day for the Baileys, yeah. Dad, the Murphy's got a brand new car. You should see it. Oh, really? <laughs> what? Oh, never mind. What's the matter with our car? Isn't it good enough for you? I'm sorry, Dad. I, I was only thinking... Excuse me. Excuse you for what? I burped. Well, that's okay, Tommy. Now, now run upstairs, Petey, and see if Zuzu is all right. Okay, Mom. Now, what do you mean, if she's all right? Well, she caught a little cold coming home from school today. She didn't button up her coat. But the doctor said it was nothing serious. The doctor? I mean, what's the doctor here? It's, 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 it's a drafty old house. Now, it's a wonder that we don't all have pneumonia. Now, why did we have to live here in the first place and stay around this measly, crummy old town? George, what's happened? Well, everything has happened. I mean, you just call this a happy family? I mean, why did we have to have all these kids? Daddy, how do you spell frankincense? Well, I don't know how. I, I, why don't you ask your mother? Hello? Oh, oh, thank you, Mrs. Welsh. Oh, yes. Oh, the doctor says she'll be fine will by you, tomorrow. No, you give me that phone, will George, you? please. Now, Mrs. Welsh, this is Zuzu's father. Now, say, what kind of teacher are you anyway? I mean, what do you mean sending Zuzu home like that, half naked? I mean, you realize she'd probably end up with pneumonia just because of your stupidity, and... Now, well, maybe my kids aren't the best-dressed kids now, but... No. Hello? Hello? Now, Jane, will you stop playing that lousy piano? We just cut it out now. Stop it. George, for heaven's sakes, what is wrong with you? I'm sorry. I'm Janie. I'm sorry. I'm Mary. I, I just got to get out of here. Now, please, Mr. Potter, I need your help. And I'll pay you any kind of bonus on the loan. I just misplaced $8,000. You misplaced eight thousand dollars. I have a life, life insurance policy, sir, and I. What's have your a, equity in it? Well, it's a fifteen thousand dollar policy, but I, I only have a five hundred dollars in it. 
And you want 8,000? Will you just please help me this once? $500? You know something, George? You're worth more dead than alive. Now get out of here. Get out! <laughs> And all the time, Potter had the $8,000 in his desk drawer. Still there, Clarence. Oh, that's terrible. And, wh and where's George? Well, he went over to Martini's Cafe. He's had a couple of drinks, Clarence. This is where you come in. Dear God. Oh, Father dear in heaven, I'm, I'm not a praying man, I'm just, but if you're up there and you can hear me, will you just please show me the way? I'm at the end of my rope. Will you show me the way, God? Mr. Bailey, are you all right? Don't think, don't drink anymore, Mr. Bailey. Please, you don't feel so good. Bailey? You say Bailey? Which Bailey? That gentleman is Mr. Bailey, George Bailey. George Bailey, huh? Huh? Oh! And the next time you talk to my wife like that, you'll get worse. It isn't enough that she slaves every day teaching your stupid kids how to read and write. You gotta call her up and insult her. You get out of here, Mr. Welsh. You hit my friend. Get out. I, I'll get out. Mr. Bailey, are you all right? Who was that? <laughs> Mr. Welsh, but don't worry. He don't come in this place no more. I'll get something for your lip. It's bleak. Just leave me alone, will you? Just leave me alone. Well, George left Martini's Cafe five minutes ago, Clarence. He's at the river now, on the bridge, looking down at the water. Are you ready, Clarence? All ready, sir. Very well. Save George Bailey, and you'll get your wings. My wings? Oh, thank you, Joseph. George! George Bailey! Get away from that bridge, do you hear me? convinced that what Mr. Potter said was true, that he was worth more dead than alive, George Bailey finds himself standing on a bridge, staring at the dark and frigid waters below. Suddenly, there's a splash. Help! Help! I'm drowning! Help! Help! No, it's not George. It's Clarence. The Apprentice Angel. And there goes George in to rescue him. It's a few minutes later now. In the bridge keeper's shack, George and Clarence are drawing off. Yeah, it's too cold to be swimming. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my underwear. I didn't have time to get anything more stylish. M my wife gave me this on my last birthday. I passed away in it. You what, mister? Ah, I, I see Tom Sawyer is drying out, too. Who? My book. I left in such a hurry, I, I brought Tom Sawyer with me. How'd you happen to fall in? Oh, I jumped in. I jumped in to save you. You were gonna save me? Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? It's going to do with what? Suicide. It's against the law to commit suicide around here, okay? It's against the law where I come from, too. And where's that? Heaven. Oh, well, that's very funny. That's very funny. <laughs> Your lips bleeding, George. I got a good bust in the jaw in answer to a prayer. Say, how'd you know my name? Oh, uh, I know all about you. Who are you, anyway? Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Well, what's the AS2? Angel second class. Uh, hey, hey, I'm getting out of here, okay? You may not need a doctor, but I do. Carry on, my good man. Now, look here. Why was it you wanted to save me? Because I'm your guardian angel, George. Oh, I see. Oh, well, you look like the kind of angel that I'd get. <laughs> so, what happened to your wings? Well, uh, uh, I haven't won my wings yet. That's why I'm an angel second class. Uh-huh. But you can help me earn them, George, by letting me help you. 
Uh-huh. Well, you don't happen to have 8,000 bucks on you, do you? No, no, no. Uh, we don't use money in heaven. You know, I'm worth more dead than alive. You mustn't talk like that. No, if it hadn't been for me, everybody would be better off. My wife and my kids and, and my friends. This is not going to be easy. No, better off if I'd never been born. What did you say? I said I wish I'd never been born. George, that's wonderful. That's wonderful? Why? The idea you just gave me. Well, you've got your wish. You've never been born. I've never been born? Exactly. No worries, no 8,000, no nothing. You simply don't exist. Hey, that, that bad ear of mine. Will you say something else in that ear? Well, you don't have a bad ear anymore. Please, try to concentrate. You're not the George Bailey you think you are. Oh, that's the doggonest thing I ever saw. You know what I have? I haven't heard out of that ear ever since I was a kid. Well, your lips stopped bleeding, too. Hey, now, wait, what's happening around here? I need a drink, that's what I need. What about you, Angel? You want a drink? Well, I, I, I don't quite know. Uh... Well, let's get dressed and we'll stroll over to Martini's place and... Excuse me, I'll stroll, you'll fly. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't have my... Uh, the... Oh, you don't have your wings. wings yeah, uh... yeah. Well, I forgot about that now. A couple of stiff drinks, we'll both fly. What do you have, fellas? Hey, where's the boss, Nick? Where's Martini? Look, wise guy, I'm the boss, see? Okay, give me a double scotch, will ya? What's yours? Well, uh, you know what I just love? Some mulled wine. Huh? Mulled wine, heavy on the cinnamon and light on the cloves. Off with you, my lad, and lively now. <laughs> you trying to be funny, pal? Uh, uh, just, just give him the same as mine. Uh, he's okay. Two double scotches. Now, what's happened to this place? It's all changed. Well, all of Bedford Falls has changed, George. You're having your wish. You've never been born. Oh, you're going to see a lot of strange things, George. Oh, good. Somebody just made it. Made what? Every time a bell rings, it means that some angel has gotten his wings. What'd he say? Uh, don't mind him, Nick. He's just a little fella who never grew up. Now, how old are you anyway, Clarence? Well, uh, next May, I'll be 293. Oh. Bad dozen a couple of pixies, huh? Go on, get out of here. You hurt me. Get... Hey, you, Rummy. Didn't I tell you never to come panhandling around here? Hey, it's Mr. Gower. Mr. Gower. Mr. Gower. Mr. Gower, don't you know me? I'm George Bailey. Buy me a drink, mister. Just one drink, will you, mister? Pinky, throw that rummy out. Oh, no, no, please. Hey, Nick, that's Mr. Gower. That's the druggist. That rumhead spent 20 years in jail for poisoning a kid. If you know him, you must be a jailbird, too. Pinky, here's two more. Get him out of Get up, George. It's a lucky thing he threw us in a snowbank. Now, wait a minute. What happened to Mr. Gower? Mr. Gower doesn't know you, George. You see, you weren't there to stop him from putting the poison into that prescription. Now, what do you mean I wasn't there? What are you, some kind of hypnotist? George. Why am I seeing all these strange things? Don't you understand? It's because you were never born. Well, if I were never born, then who am I? You're nobody. You have no identity. What do you mean, I have no identity? No papers, no driver's license, no 4F card, no insurance policy. Wait a minute, I got Zuzu's belt. What? I bought my little girl a belt hanging on the Christmas tree, and I forgot to give it to her, and, I, and I've got it... I've got it in my... Now, wait a minute, it's not there. It's gone. Everything's gone, isn't it? You've been given a great gift, George. A chance to see what the world would be like without you. You're crazy. You're crazy as a bed bug, and you're driving me crazy, too. I'm going home to my wife and my family. Do you understand that? And I'm going home alone. Stay with him, Clarence. Oh, I will, sir. Right now, poor George is seeing Main Street the way it would be if he hadn't lived. The thing that's really shocked him, sir, is the building and loan office. Do you know what's there now? It's a pawn shop. What's he doing now, Clarence? Can you see? He's talking to Ernie Bishop, the taxi driver. He wants Ernie to take him home. You better stay close to him, Clarence. He's gonna need you. Oh, I will, sir. I will. Come on, step on it, will you, Ernie? Yeah, Get yeah, me yeah, home. yeah, 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 yeah. Where do you live, buddy? 
Don't you start pulling that stuff on me. You're 320 Sycamore Street. 320 Sycamore, fine. Yeah, just hurry up, will ya? Susan, yeah, so okay, buddy, okay. I don't know what's happening to me, Ernie. I'm going crazy. I think I got some, must have had some bad liquor or something like that. Look, Ernie, all right, you're Ernie Bishop, right? And you live with your wife, and you live with whoa, your whoa, kids. Whoa, 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 You see my wife? Oh, now, come on, what do you mean, have I seen your wife? I've been to your house a hundred times. I mean, we built it for you, well, didn't we? What are you talking about? My wife, my wife took off with the kids five years ago, and I ain't seen you before in my life. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, just get me home, will you? 320 Sycamore. Yeah. Mary? Mary? Where are you, Janie? Petey? Hey, Tommy? Zuzu? Hey, kids, where are you? This is just an old abandoned house, George. You have no wife, no children. What have you done with them? All right, up with your hands. Bert. Bert the cop. Hey, thank heavens you're here. Now, now, now look, look, look. Why, why don't you be a good fellow and I'll take you to the doctor? Bert, will you listen to me, please? I mean, what's the matter with you guys? I mean, it's that fellow over there. See, he says he's an angel and he's... And he's got me in some kind of spell or Look, something like that. Look, I hate like to that. use my nightstick on you, buddy, but I guess I got... Hey, Bert! Ow! Ow! Run, George, run! He can't hit you while I'm biting him. Run! Ow! My teeth aren't what they used to be. Joseph, help! Joseph! Huh? Huh? Where did he go, Arnie? Where did he go? I don't know. They just disappeared. I'm getting out of here. I'm here again, George. Clarence, my own mother, didn't recognize me. Man, if only Harry were back from Washington. George, there is no Harry. Your brother fell through the ice and was drowned at the age of nine. That's a lie. Harry won the Congressional Medal of Honor, and he saved the lives of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died. Strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. Don't you see, George? You really had a wonderful life. Don't you see what a mistake it would be to throw it away? Where's Mary? Please. Now, where's my wife? I'm not gonna like it, George. Well, where is she? I'll choke it out of you if I have to. Now, where's my wife? The library. She works there. She's about to lock up for the night, so I... George! George, come back! Oh, there must be some easier way for me to get my wings. Mary! <laughs> Mary! I'm sorry. The library is closed. Now, Mary. It's George. I mean, don't you know me? No. I don't know you. No. Now let me go. Oh, Mary, come on. Please don't do this, Mary. Please help me. Where are our kids, Mary? I need you. Mary, please. I need you. Don't get away from Tell me. Tell me, Mary. No. I'm George. No. I'm Mary. Oh. Oh. Clarence? Clarence, where are you? I'm here, George. Can you help me, Clarence? Help me. You just get me back. I don't know. I don't care what happens to me. Only get me back to my wife and kids, please. I want to live again. Oh. Thank you, George. Thank you, Lord. George! Is that you down there, George? Now get out of here, Bert. Just, just get out of here. If you come any closer, I'm going to let you have it. What the Sam Hill are you yelling for, George? 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 I mean, Bert, Bert, do you know me? No, you. I've been looking all over town for you. Where you been? Hey, hey Bert. Bert, I'm alive again, Bert. <laughs> you sure you're all right? Hey, your mouth's bleeding. Is it? Oh, hey, look at that. My mouth's bleeding. <laughs> Bert, that's good, isn't it? Hey, and, hey. Zuzu's bell. I got Zuzu's bell. I had it in my pocket. Here it is. Now, what do you know about that? Hey, Merry Christmas, Bert. Well, Merry Christmas to you, George. Now, look, get in the car. I'll drive you home. You will, Bert? I mean, let's do that, and then let's just turn the sirens open, okay? You got it. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, you beautiful old building and loan. Come on. Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. Hey, I'm home. Hey, Bert, come on in. <laughs> hey, what is... Wait a minute, what's all this? What are all these, all these people doing here? You're for you, George. These are reporters. I mean, what are the reporters doing here? I mean, hey, Merry Christmas, reporters. Very Merry Christmas to you. And Mr. Bank Examiner, Merry Christmas to Mr. you. Mr. Bailey, there's a deficit. I know, Mr. Carter, I know. There's $8,000, I bet. 
right? I got a warrant here. I'm sorry. Well, a warrant. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, that's a wonderful thing. That's a Merry Christmas. And hey, where's Mary? Just look at this old drafty house. Isn't that wonderful? Have you seen my wife? Where's my kids? Dad! Okay, Daddy. kids, hey. Beady, Janie, now, oh, I can just eat you. Now, where's your mother? She went looking for you, Daddy, with Uncle Billy. Oh, oh. Daddy! Aw, oh, Zuzu, my little ginger snap. How you feel, huh? Fine, Daddy, not a smidge of temperature. No, no, not a smidge of temperature. George! Oh, George, darling! It's Mommy, <laughs> Mommy time! George, where have you been? Oh, Mary, Mary, darling, now just, just, come here, let me touch you, all right? <laughs> Are you real? I mean, you have no idea what's just happened to me. You have no idea what's happening now. They're on their way. Who? <sighs> Who's on their way? I mean, the police, the uh, police department, the FBI, uh, what? I I'd love to see them. Now, come on, I'm alive again. Listen, Mary, I'm alive again. Oh, yes, darling, yes. Now, you close your eyes and come downstairs. <laughs> what is it? Now, what's happening, Mary? Now, can I open my eyes now? We're all ready, Uncle Billy. Come on in, everybody. Come on. Okay, George, open your eyes. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Money, a laundry basket filled with money for you, George. Mary did it. I don't understand. What money? When your friends heard you were in trouble, darling, they started taking up a collection. This is for you, George. I'm sure there's more than you need here. Oh. Charlie, hey, there's Mr. Gower. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Gower? Huh? And Mrs. Thompson, Ed, Tom, Mr. Martini? Uh, none of us would have a roof over our heads if it wasn't for you, George. Oh, gosh, this is wonderful. I, I don't know what to say, except, uh... Well, thank you all very much. George, look who just flew in, your brother Harry. Yes, hey! Hey, hey. Mary's telegram, I came running. Oh, Harry! Hey, everybody, how about a toast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good idea, Ernie. A toast to my big brother, George, the richest man in town. You didn't forget, did you? No. Reach in that pocket in here. Yep. How about that? <laughs> well, that's your Daddy. belt. Yeah. <laughs> George, where'd you get this book from? Ah! Look at mine! Oh, much better. <laughs> This is the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Wait, look, there's something written in it. Yeah, microphone. No, it says right here. It says, "Dear George, remember that no man, ah, oh, no man is a failure who has friends." Thanks for the wings, love, Clarence. Who's oh. Clarence? Uh, he's a dear, dear friend of mine. Look, Daddy. Teacher says that every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right, Zulu. Attaboy, Clarence. Happy landing. Coming up next, the holiday humor continues with a special gift of the best in British comedy. Hyacinth Bouquet wraps up some high society hilarity for a double Christmas service of keeping up appearances. It kicks off next, right here on KCPT, your home for the holidays. Oh. 